Hi, my name is Hiran Vigad and I'm the product sales specialist for the CPS Disc Centrifuge UHR machine. The UHR stands for Ultra High Resolution and this instrumentation is used for high resolution particle size characterization uh, using a technique called differential centrifugal sedimentation. Okay, so what is this technique all about? How does it work? Um, best way for me to explain this is if you had a handful of sand particles of different sizes, if you were to drop them into a beaker of water, what you will find is that the large particles will sediment first and the fine particles will sediment later. If we can actually measure the time taken for these particles to sediment through a fluid of known viscosity, known density, known volume, as well as many other parameters, we can use something called Stokes' law to convert the sedimentation time into particle size. How does this work with the instrumentation? We don't have a beaker of water inside the machine, but instead we have a, a disc which is rotated at very high speeds. And this is done to create a centrifugal force that will help to accelerate the sedimentation of the particles. The disc is held in between a light source and detector, which is kept at the edge of the disc. So as these bands of particles separate, um, we can measure um, the sedimentation time by the obscuration of light at, as at each point of these bands going past the light source. And using this as a technique, we can characterize materials from low as 2 nanometers to the upper size range of 80 microns, depending on particle density. So, what are the main features and benefits of the instrumentation? Um, as everyone will know, there are many other particle sizing instruments out there. Um, I always like to say that these other techniques are very complementary and you should always use more than one technique when you're characterizing your material. When it comes to the CPS disc centrifuge, um, one of the main benefits you'll find is the ability to give ultra high resolution, which means when you are characterizing a sample where you have many peaks, and in this example, let's say we've got a polystyrene mixture, we've got nine peaks, and as you will see from the distribution, we can actually separate all nine peaks and resolve them and show them clearly on the screen. So here we can separate, detect and characterize particles um, down to two to five percent difference in size. The CPS technique is a great technique for looking at very small concentration of material, so it has extremely high sensitivity. In this particular example, we've got a very broad peak, nothing very exciting about this, but if we zoom into the actual trace, we will see that we've got a very small peak at high particle size, um, which is almost hidden at the baseline, but this peak is real, and it's representing a certain percentage of large particles. And in most cases, you'll find that this small peak is of more important than the actual main particle sizing peak. The CPS technique is accurate, reliable and reproducible. And in this particular example, we've run a PVC sample five times, um, I believe on five different instruments, five different conditions. When we overlay the runs, we get almost identical data. How can that be? Each time the instrument is used, it may be used at a different disk speed, um, you may ha have a different gradient, different user, why do we get the same results? The reason for this is because before we run a sample, we always calibrate the instrument, meaning we run a sample of known size and known density, and we are able to use this to convert the time axis to particle size for the material um, that you're examining. Everyone would like to be able to image the particles and see what they can under a microscope. And we have a lot of evidence to show that the size distribution you get with the CPS instrumentation does match what you see under a microscope. Um, there have been a lot of studies where um, users have been using other techniques and they've seen the large particles and not seen the smaller ones. However, being a separation technique, the CPS will separate the large and the small, so your distribution is of the whole sample, it's real, and it matches what you can see under a microscope. One of the other nice features is that because of its ability to resolve particles, it becomes an excellent technique for characterizing agglomerates and for looking at aggregates. In this example, we've got a pure and impure adenovirus sample, and you will see from the red trace where you've got 
dimers, trimers, tetramer, pentamer, and also a large peak showing some large particles. We can actually show all of that with a CPS instrument, and as we purify the adenovirus sample, we can remove these agglomerates and show the clean, pure peak. Most techniques, you will actually struggle with the resolution and will be unable to see these agglomerates and aggregates in the sample. The other very interesting application is the ability to separate and characterize particles which have been coated with another uh, material type. A great example of this is where you're looking at gold and silver nanoparticles and you're looking at the coating characteristic of those materials. And in this example you can clearly see we've got a peak for the core material and as we coat that material um, we create a new material and, and when we run this out you'll see that the peak position has shifted and we also can see a very small peak still showing some of the uncoated material. And by using the position of these two peaks and knowing the density of both the core and the coated material we can work out the shell thickness of the applied uh, material on the core particle.